Howdy mates, good afternoon. How are we all doing? Here's a uh, part three video. I'm right now actually over at, uh, it's called Gilchrist Park, closer to uh, downtown Punta Gorda. So now we're basically right by the 41 bridge that brings you in the Port Charlotte to the north. So yeah, we're, we're essentially in the downtown area now. But as part of this video, Oh yeah, before I get into it, yeah, like over there, that's the 41 bridge that brings you over here. That brings you across the Charlotte Haba, which is the second largest estuary in Florida, in case if any of you did not know. So, from one of my videos earlier, I did a video that focused a little bit on Ponce de Leon, but this is going to provide more of a historical context of his life. So, as you can see, right up here, we have a famous dedicated statue or monument that pertains to Ponce de Leon himself. Now, what's actually fascinating about Ponce de Leon is I feel he is a conquistador, or an English conqueror, who does not receive as much of a, what you call, recognition as that of someone like the evil and cunning Christopher Columbus. Now what's actually fascinating about the two individuals was that they actually knew each other, for real. And as a matter of fact, during uh, Columbus's second expedition to, to uh, where was it? over to the New World. It was in the earlier 1500s, I believe it was 1507, somewhere around that time. He traveled with Christopher Columbus to a place known as Hispaniola, which is now known as Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Now, for the few years, actually, until I believe uh, 1510, somewhere around that time, he actually served as a commander in that area. So that helped him build some of his prestige to go back to Spain for a time. But then he made another return back to the New World and actually went over to Puerto Rico back in 1511, I believe. And then he was actually appointed, you know, due to his wealth and prestige through uh, the Spanish Empire, he actually became governor of Puerto Rico, which in English means rich port. So, once he was a governor for a couple of years, he actually received a commission from the king, basically, to go out and explore new lands. So his expedition started in 1513, in which he discovered some land to the east from where he was staying in Puerto Rico, and he actually came at the perfect time. It was around Easter. So that usually in Easter that's during the springtime and that's when a lot of the flowers begin to bloom. And so he actually decided to name this new piece of land La Florida. Which for those of you who don't know, which I feel all of you should know for any of you who reside in the state, Florida literally, literally means flower. In Spanish. So it just goes to show that this state does indeed have a lot of Spanish roots because you know those were the I mean it's claimed that Ponce de Leon was the first Spanish conquistador to discover this land but I honestly disagree with that because I'm sure that there were several other explorers before 
he came onto this land. But he's just one of the first recognized anyways. But with that being said, he named the land because of the blooming flowers. And eventually he made his way around the state and actually found this place in which he actually called it Bahia de Carlos, also known as the Charlotte Haba. Now, as always, he did face the indigenous tribe of the Calusa, and he wasn't quite welcomed at first. So then, so yeah, that was back in 1513. But then, he went back to Puerto Rico, I believe, and eight years later, he actually came back to this same place with over 200 men and supplies, especially in the form of livestock and food. And he set up a camp at where I actually was just earlier, which is actually called Ponce de Leon Park. He actually had a camp set up there. And he wanted to see if there was possibility to provide a new settlement into the area. However, though, he was actually unsuccessful. Because by then, the Calusa were a lot more familiar with recognizing new settlers. And they knew that they were going to try taking some of the land. It's difficult to say if they knew if the Spanish were going to try forming, you know, a mutual partnership. It's difficult to say. I mean, usually that doesn't really happen when a conquest occurs. <clears throat> so, a battle happened, and unfortunately, Ponce de Leon was shot by an arrow that contained poison, and then he retreated back to Cuba and died of his wounds. So, pretty much, Punta Gorda does have a little bit of a Spanish origin, because essentially this place is named Fat Point, since the portion of land we're standing on juts out a bit further into the harbor itself, kind of like a headland, almost like a promontory. So, that's really basically what Ponce de Leon has been most known for. Was his most recognized discovery of Florida. Even though I'm sure there were many other explorers before his time. But he just is one of the most recognized down here in Florida. So, all right, you guys, thanks for watching, and I'll be sure to provide, like, a, like a link to Ponce de Leon's biography, because, you know, for us people who live down here in the state or are just visiting, we should definitely learn more about the history. Because, as you know, we never want to repeat history, do we? <laughs> So, all right, you guys, take care. Enjoy your Wednesday and journey on our journey is once again outwards. Take care, folks. See ya. Toodles.